Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the panel discussion on drones and autonomous vehicles exploring security, privacy, and ethical issues. I am Shaurya Kaushik, your host for the session. I would like to invite our esteemed host. I would like to esteem panelists for the discussion. We have Mr. Prashant Deo, Head Center of Excellence for Security Tools and Engineering, TCS. Mr. Prashant will be moderating the session. Welcome, Prashant, sir. We have Mrs. Nagini M, Director, IT Cybersecurity, Vision India. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Shishir Kumar Shandilya, Deputy Director of Secure, Center of Excellence in Cybersecurity, VIT, Bhopal. Welcome, sir. Hello. I would like to invite Dr. Naved Rizvi, Coordinator and Convener, Center of Excellence, Drone Technology, Gautam Buddh Technical University, Noida. Uh, I would request uh, Ms. Nag Mrs. Nagini to be on stage, please. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. To everybody. Yeah. Good afternoon. So I would request Prashant, sir, to kindly take over the session. Over to you, Prashant. Thank you, Shorya. And uh, thanks for this uh, good opportunity, DSCI for us to discuss on this uh, uh, very interesting subject. Uh, I'm going to moderate a session today. Uh, I have my uh, fellow panelists with me. Uh, I will uh, request them to introduce themselves quickly. Uh, and, and then uh, I'll, I'll introduce myself and then we'll start the session. So maybe Dr. Shishir, if you want to quickly go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Yeah, thank you, Prashant, sir. A very good afternoon to all of you. And myself, Dr. Shishir Shandele, I hail from uh, Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. And I'm currently looking after uh, the Center of Excellence in Cybersecurity at Vellore Institute of Technology, Bhopal campus, VIT. And uh, my interest area is specifically on adaptive uh, cyber resiliency, as well as the defensive methods. And we work on, uh, not only on the, uh, uh, we are the practitioner on the cybersecurity methods, but we are also giving consultancy to government of India on cybersecurity methods. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shishis. Uh, Dr. Rizvi, maybe yeah. you can introduce yourself. So, uh, I'm Dr. Naved Rizvi, and I am working with Gautam Buddha University. I'm a faculty over here since last 12 years. And presently, my role is that I'm looking for the Center of Excellence for Drone Technology coordinator and convener of this center and under me a uh, um, lot of the teams are working so we are working in the manual drones as well as autonomous drones on the different aspects of it right from making console to cyber security and even to the manufacturing aspects and assembling aspects and R&D aspects of all the things we are looking for. Thank you doctor look forward to having a good conversation on that thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Nagini, ma'am, uh, maybe if you can go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Yeah, I'm Nagini Madhurantakam. I'm an information technologist. I'm cyber security and cyber forensics consultant. I am currently taking care of building one platform for drones and that to secure the platform that we are building for drones. So in that context, I am associated with all of you. I am working for Vision India. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, quickly about myself, uh, I work for the Tata Consultancy Services as part of uh, cybersecurity practice. Uh, around 22 plus years experience in the information security, cybersecurity. Uh, currently, I am leading a center of excellence for security tools and engineering. And as part of that, uh, I work on various new emerging technologies, including uh, autonomous vehicle, drones, and other technologies. Uh, so uh, again, thank you, DSCI, for this opportunity. So I think we would get started with uh, today's discussion. Uh, 
So there are two things uh, which we would discuss today. Uh, one is about drones, whether manual, autonomous, and second thing is about uh, your connected and autonomous vehicles. And then the area what we would like to uh, really take a view from panelists is uh, in terms of security, privacy, and uh, ethics into these uh, two emerging technologies. Uh, quite relevant uh, for, uh, I think, uh, today's uh, word, uh, both technologies have got a really good prominence and acceptance uh, now commercially also. So let me start with the drone technology. Uh, so if you look at today, uh, and if you look at the evolution of uh, drones, uh, obviously it started from uh, defense and military purpose. Uh, long back, uh, if you look at an history, uh, it got adapted since World War One and World War Two, and then military started using it since that time. And then uh, I think uh, it has been extensively used in military for surveillance purpose and some other purpose, right? But Slowly, it got, uh, I think, uh, adoption on a public side as well as a commercial side. On public side, uh, if I have to quote a few examples, uh, uh, starting from uh, probably and uh, agricultural industry, where we seeing at least in a Western country, there is a wider adoption in terms of uh, using drones uh, to do a uh, monitoring of the fields or uh, maybe monitoring of the health of a soil and all that. So quite an innovative uses what we see. Similarly, I think in an industry like uh, the retail industry where Amazon has, I think in year 2015, uh, they, uh, I think, experienced on uh, delivering uh, the packets using a drone. So drone delivery has become uh, quite a commercial uh, proposition. And if you look at back here in India, I think we, we do see this has been extensively used again uh, in a commercial space, uh, medical COVID-19, I think recently we have we seen a usage of drones to uh, deliver the medicines into uh, COVID-affected areas. I think that that was really a good use case. And from public usage perspective, I mean, beyond our kids playing with the drones, uh, we, we also see uh, it's been used into uh, photography. Uh, uh, Bollywood is using it for uh, a lot of their shootings and all that, right? So we we see a lot of wider use of it and then technology really has a lot of merits if we use it rightly. Uh, but I think as we always know, there are two sides of the coins. Uh, it is it is not immune to a risk of either cyber security or if I have to talk about on a flight safety side, right? So we'll not talk about flight safety, but on a cyber security side, we, we see uh, some of the incidents coming in where drones getting hijacked uh, and then data getting steal from drones. So what I'd like to understand from uh, uh, Dr. Rizvi to begin with, uh, what is your view in terms of, uh, I mean, adoption of these drones uh, on a commercial and public side? And what do you see as a top probably of uh, security risk? Uh, including an attack vectors. Maybe if you can quickly, uh, Dr. Yeah, okay. okay. Thanks a lot, Prashanji. Uh, and it's really nice. And thank you, DSEI, for giving me uh, this uh, option. Right. So, uh, regarding uh, cyber attacks, uh, what I want to see, I look drone. Basically, if I go to the basic, uh, comprehend basic components of the, of the drone. So, it comprises of uh, processor, Wi Fi, RF communication, camera, right? It comprises of data storage, sensors, battery, and, and nautical components, as well as controller for manual, as well as uh, we have console for autonomous drive. So if you just take two things out, the controllers and the automated, uh, this uh, aeronautical hardware is a computer. That's all the things you will get in computer and smartphone. So what I look at as this technology will progress, and we are seeing it in the commercial domain, a lot of things are coming, and India has foreseen a lot of things in that, and a lot of even government is very, very keen to have this technology into their existence. So cyber security and, and privacy concern are same as we have right now in our web application. So most, most of the uh, security concern according to the application and where it is mitigated, we have to counter those things, right? So it's I, I can call or we call it is data on wings, right? And we have to really uh, means uh, we have to uh, see its privacy and it's not manipulated. So drone is quite accessible right now, even to the common people. 
like for example few years before if you see mobile was not accessible to the common people around 15 years before like the same this uh, stage is there for drone technology so as it is more and more accessible to the common people available to the government and industry and and it is going better and better more than even in the recreation purpose so several threats are there so it can be easily hijacked we have supply chain threats right and for that if you uh, if you uh, know some about 2 3 months before government has uh, what they have done that uh, they have asked for uh, banning the uh, import of the drone components from the uh, international market so we are in that region right now but still some of the things are coming and this this threat is very very think that they, they can steal our data and they can they can do according to their will and they can be mastered of our drones what we are profiling in our in 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 our uh, society and commercial thing so it may contain data and the hackers can modify it mold it according to the will so i can give you an example the photographs in for the recreation purpose photographs and and this uh, means live streaming they can be manipulated by the uh, by the hijackers for their for their things and uh, if we are connected through internet or maybe by bluetooth or gps connection this is high high uh, risk there in the everything of the drone activity so i look at that uh, we can produce it can produce harms to any application where we will use it as a use case for it in in the in the future or in the existence what is coming yeah no i totally agree i think uh... extensive usage of a drone in a commercial and public space has increased an attack surface for sure and i think as we explained these components are uh, typical components including a controller software and then other applications and even the communication probably is not the way it has to be secured so obviously i think there is a larger attack surface uh, but if one has to really pick up uh, top two to three things especially on a commercial public side to counter these threats uh, on a security side what do you think uh, which could be those safeguarding technology uh, if we have to safeguard uh, regarding the technology see see uh, right now uh, if you see uh, the most progressed uh, in drone technology is, is being used in the defense application right so whatever they are okay they have sophisticated uh, uh, i can say they have sophisticated technology to counter that but whatever is there can be utilized uh, means can be seen as a hacker in 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 uh, means in the domain of commercial thing right so we have for example we have coordinate system for the gps uh, means i see as a communication thing mostly so if it is co- uh, connected to a gps and there are hacker and spoofing and jamming of the drones is possible at any stage of the application and they can also do geo uh, inferencing also so they can for example there are zones where drones cannot go and the commercial uh, uh, means commercial utilization of the drone if it is it will go and uh, progress over there right so there is always a chances that uh, that the company who is holding this thing they, they can go for higher cost or maybe a user is using and this is the problem so gps is hijack geo fencing and data sniffing is the important thing and it, it can come in any stage when we are uh, proliferating uh, activities from the sky so this is one of the very major concern what i look at yeah so uh, i mean you uh, spoken about a very salient point about uh, the geo restrictions right so do you see any controls like uh, built uh, into a software like a geo fencing uh, where uh, these drones are allowed to operate only within those areas and the outside areas probably those are not allowed are those kind of controls been commercially available i mean beyond uh, maybe a military and aerospace facility mhm uh, yeah there are for example for geo fencing we have for for the there are government buildings or airports and those things the problem with the geo fencing this is coming uh, this uh, control the the uh, database is maintained for a zero uh, for no flying zone is mostly by the manufacturer of of uh, this uh, uh, this commercial vehicle but hijackers are also bypassing uh, is used by wrapping uh, means uh, aluminum foil and those things they are they are they are using it yeah there are c- controllers coming but it's still in the uh, research phase right now 
understood so that means obviously there are inherent risk of this technology yeah, which always there have. always yeah, there yeah, yeah. Okay, always there totally agree so coming back to uh, now dr shishir uh, while i think we understand from dr rizvi uh, it's getting democratized uh, nowadays and uh, while i was reading through i think government of india has uh, sort of allowed uh, usage of maybe a micro and nano drones uh, which can be used uh, probably with less restrictions so from that point of view what is the regulatory framework uh, uh, in in india which is controlling this uh, what, what's your view and what is regulatory framework is sort of uh, uh, enforcing some of these controls if you want to probably uh, please elaborate on that yeah thank you prashant that's a really important question uh, i think for this discussion because when we are talking about drones uh, uh, it is not uh, like a toy that you can you can fly it anywhere so obviously uh, we in india we can say that uh, initially like uh, over a decade uh, uh, we started with a complete ban uh, where in india like it was uh, uh, not allowed to uh, to fly any drone for commercial purposes then uh, slowly uh, government relaxed uh, multiple uh, restrictions and now we have a well established uh policy uh, by government of india which is uh, last year in 2021 uh, they have uh, you know formally published in a indian gadget uh, which is known as drone rules and uh, that was keep on amended so recent amendment has done in uh, february 2022 and uh, now that is known as Ro- drone rules amendment act uh, 2022 so this clearly signifies the role and the intention of government of india to make a clear shift from uh, in the policies to allow the drone operations in india and in a in a very liberalized way now when talking about liberalized way it doesn't mean that uh, everything would be so free and uh, the government of india is also taking care of ensuring the security from the illegal drones we technically call them rogue drones uh through the anti rogue drone framework which was uh, initially announced in 2019 and uh, thereafter multiple things have happened so the prime objective uh, of having these regulation is to uh, set a complete ecosystem of drone manufacturing import operations maintenance and also keeping everybody responsible like all right from the manufacturer the users the pilots everybody have to have their own uh, responsible position talking about uh, more about the anti rogue drone guidelines which government is still uh, working on it is the control the uh, the rising number of drone related incidences uh, it is across the world that includes india as well so as per these guidelines the technology should be capable of neutralizing these illegal flying objects and jam all the operating gps uh, um, uh, operated frequencies of uavs so for that uh, we are uh, soon coming up with an indigenous uh, solution uh, for this anti drone system which is being done by border security force uh, national security guards and uh, drdo national uh, defense research uh, and development organization of india so this anti drone system would be uh, fully capable technologically technically to uh, to make down all these uh, you know illegal drones and uh, keep the entire system safe in addition to this anti drone system the civil aviation ministry of government of india has also suggested multiple legal procedure to handle these issues of rogue drones uh, the leg- legislation also need to address the risk based uh, use uavs uh, with their authorities the cross checking of the authorities and the coordination of those uh, issues with the relevant department and the agencies because it it cross roads multiple uh, agencies and departments like it act uh, even up to some, some extent human rights as well and by laying down these kind of uh, foundation of legislation uh, it should also aim to mitigate the adverse impact of this entry drone guidelines as well so it should be strict it should be uh, contained but it should be for the betterment of society and the human being so uh, things are like in a premature state but yeah we are in a good uh, shape in india however uh, such kind of guidelines and regulation need to be strict 
to monitor to properly enforce the law and the regulation right from the registration of the drones to the licensing of the drone pilots one interesting website if i could uh, show you is the digital sky which has been uh, controlled by directorate general of civil aviation uh, and uh, i would just would like to show this if i can share sure yeah so this is the uh, the website digital sky dgca government of in at home and this is having all types of certificates like uh, right from like if you are if you want to use the uh, the unmanned uh, aerial systems if you want if you are a manufacturer or an importer if you are if you want to become an authorized rpto and if you want to become a certified remote pilot so it actually gives a comprehensive approach towards uh, drones and its operation in india so you can see what we have just mentioned uh, prashant uh, from the nano to micro small medium and even the larger drones which are above 150 uh, kg so this website is having all sort of application certification now what feature i just wanted to mention here is the interactive airspace maps so you can see the the india map here and as the flying zones uh, like you cannot fly drones over airport so you can say uh, it is the red zone yellow zone and green zones so before even planning your business or anything you can actually see that what are the free zones for you so this is very uh, you know interesting and interactive uh, uh, website and you can see that uh, specific zones are being identified as red and yellow and then the other one is the the remaining part is the green one and this is like uh, you can this is interactive and it is keep on updating you can see that uh, uh, there is no fly zone the red zone over the borders so the government of india in a nutshell i can say the government of india is doing a wonderful job uh, however the technology itself it is on the uh, you know early stages uh, we are yet to see the ai modeled or ai controlled drones uh, there are multiple things which probably we are going to discuss in this session uh, at the later stages uh, for that we need to be ready and that need to be amended again and again thank you dr shishir i think uh, that website really gives a lot of information i, I think certainly uh, one can go and read through but just a question there so even for nano and micro if, if somebody wants to just buy a drone and register themselves is it mandatory to go and register and then undergo through some training or no uh, like for nano and micro there are like that depends uh, what range uh, you are talking what type of objective of your company whether if you are an individual or an organization what is the uh, what is the motive behind your organization like if you are uh, generating business over it what kind of business you are talking care of so there are multiple things so it is not that uh, one on one uh, and government takes time to uh, get you approved uh, for the green zones even the vertical uh, height up to what height you can apply the drones that is also uh, uh, need to be mentioned and there are multiple uh, you know other regulation which need to be uh, taken care of for nano and micro uh, generally there are there are free because their uh, their capacity is not uh, you know exceeding beyond it but there are there are certain regulations about it yeah no, i i understand i think it's going to be a risk based approach as as recommended uh, so uh, coming to uh, nagini ma'am uh, now see these drones have a capability to trespass our backyards and homes right uh, part of video shooting or survey surveillance right so there is always an speculation uh, within i think uh, uh, society is it invading a privacy or is it ethical to use these drones uh, what are your views on that yes definitely it is some kind of invasion that is taking place you are invading the privacy of individuals okay uh, you are flying over homes and trying to collect data and you are sharing this data through different channels which are exposed to public and private networks there again you have lack of security 
to share this data across these channels and that leads to have either use misuse or abuse of data and which you don't have any control over it and it is not assuring any human dignity as well so these are all of course the ethical issues and there are some other issues like safety issues where the crashing of the drones that are taking place and falling of the drones that leads to have human loss animal loss property damages all these things are quite possible when your drones are flowing because there are no certain defined standards for these drones varieties of drones that are classified but there are no specific defined standards or specific defined guidelines to use them still all these guidelines are in draft stage across the globe across all countries that leads to have ambiguity why flying your drones across various regions of course and apart from this these drones are carrying certain components on board are highly vulnerable to have various kinds of attacks and your drone which you are using for good purpose can be hacked and used for any malicious purpose also there is no control over it apart from that the drones wherever you are flying there is no proper ground control to them like you have air control stations like that only you should have certain drone control uh, stations which can be taking care of the flying capacity and capability of the drones and it should control actually the free movement of the drones okay once it is in place your ethics will be saved and even government also is to provide necessary facilities to accelerate to provide these sort of control stations unmanned aerial vehicle control stations are very much necessary when you are giving drones for private sector to use in their different services say okay not only for medical service it may be used for reality sector it may be used by any other uh, commercial sectors for supply chain management demand chain management if you are having you can as well use the drones but that should have definite operational standards and this uh, aerial vehicle should have ability to recognize the other aircraft which is moving around and should avoid the crashes and all okay once you start building intelligence on it the cost of the drone increases so people start avoiding that intelligence in the drones which leads to have uh, various kinds of attacks which are not intended to okay uh, apart from that i can say we are still in the nascent stage only so we should have a powerful framework also to handle these drones which are of very varieties okay they are nano micro or hybrid or very heavy or light vehicles okay for all these things there should be a definite framework that should be designed and developed and that should give the assurance to the components that are getting used are secured and safe which cannot be hacked by any malicious users okay that is expected and yeah. i can say that you this framework should be very easy and which should be very adoptable and that should protect the ethical values of the system so that privacy cannot be invaded and the protection can be provided and people should feel the safety and security of usage of these drones easily freely in the air i i totally agree if i think that there is a need to have yes. an maybe a wider framework uh, the way i think or electrical utilities or any other critical infrastructure uh, you have and i would probably treat this as also uh, critical it from a perspective also it should be 
these Correct. standards industry to industry changes right agricultural industry you can use or manufacturing industry you can use reality industry industry specific frameworks need to be built and the standards need to be built so that people will have the sense of security while using or while allowing the drones to fly over and i i absolutely agree so if i i think sum it up what we are saying uh, one is uh, obviously the technology is good uh, every technology has got uh, inherent risk and it has to be controlled by a wider framework as uh, uh, nagini ma'am was saying and that framework has to have a standards for various industries based on the application of it uh, supply chain risk needs to be addressed as dr rizvi has said because that becomes very important given uh, i think everything could not be today make in india hopefully i think there are attempts to uh, make in india for uh, drones as well and i think as dr shishir has said uh, there are guidelines and recently the amendments which has happened in year 20 i think this year itself uh, that shows i think there are sincere efforts from government of india to uh, make it a wider usage with uh, guidelines and also given a reference of it act where some of the it related things are uh, related to uh, uh, drones right so i think if we sum it up uh, the technology is good it it requires a larger uh, framework and uh, some of the framework which could be adapted is like a nist has got a cyber security framework right those could be one of the close framework which has to be adapted uh, based on i think uh, whatever component we, we need to protect and then make sure i think the technology becomes so robust uh, there is a positive assurance to uh, the community so that the community use increases and then, then there is the assurance of privacy as well as the ethics so that there is a balance between uh, the application of the technology and then the risk whatever risk it has so i think a great uh, discussion on a uh, drones uh moving forward i think our next subject uh, is about uh, connected and autonomous vehicles so quickly uh, so i think while in india we we seeing uh, connected vehicles are there autonomous vehicle i think it will take some more time there, there are some trials which are happening right but i think uh, every vehicle has got some connectivity today whether it is in vehicle or uh, it is connected with uh, uh, other uh, external things as well uh so obviously i think uh, it 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 is going to increase the convenience and comfort for uh, i think a commuter for sure and it would probably the way it is being claimed it would lead to a less accidents and given in india uh, the way the accidents are happening that this technology is going to be really boon for all of us but having said that i think this technology also has got its inherent risk the privacy ethics problem Uh, so starting with dr rizvi what are your views in terms of this uh, connected and autonomous vehicle where do you see while i think you are doing a research on a drone side uh, but the technology is again uh, autonomous technology uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah yeah thank you thank you prashant ji so what i look at autonomous vehicle so that was data on sky and this is data which is flu- which is uh, driving on roads right so this is the only difference i can see all the uh, safeguarding mechanism in terms of cyber security or physical security or uh, privacy has to be encountered over here as well right and as our uh, technology is progressing the cyber security the people they are also uh, means have to progress a lot so this is the thing so a lot of things are there so we have we the, the connectivity over here is also wirelessly and it is vulnerable to hijack by the malicious actor right so it depends on the intention and level the bad actors are having so they achieve that for example they can make the vehicle unresponsive they can hijack uh, the the uh, vehicle they can jam the uh, road traffic they can crash it with the uh, basically other vehicles they can crash it with the infrastructure even even they can they can steal the information they can use this uh, Uh, autonomous or connected vehicle as uh, a terrorist attack on other vehicles as well so uh, even they can unlock and close the doors according to will right so there are a lot of things and a lot of things are coming and this is also in progressing stage i will say and uh, it's deployed in in us and those they are deploying it in the testing phases and, and it is progressing somehow 
right yeah connected vehicles are there but i'm more more talking about the autonomous or uh, self driving vehicles something like that i'm talking about so there are a lot of things so uh, some some uh, i want to say and then uh, cyber security people working on like for example uh, uh, ransomware attack is very very uh, prevalent and is looking at and people are working that they for example what 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 they are doing in the testing stage as well as in, as in the manufacturing stage the attackers or bad actors what they are doing they are they are uh, uh, countering the sensors and they are they are they are taking um, is, uh, for example they are uh, changing the features of the sensors according to, to their will and and this can be exploited when it is used uh, on on roads so there are machine learning algorithms and models there even normal user and uh, if data is changing data positioning is going on they cannot be detected quite easily right so that is also going on and that hampering is also uh, tested that there is one malicious actors was targeting uh, cpu of a, of a basically uh, means uh, a tested car in, in us and this also activity has to be seen because they are connected together so and on uh, this autonomous connected vehicle have their network system again gps system wireless system there are uh, there are somewhere we are using bluetooth right so uh, mitm M mitm attacks and those things are coming also over here there are hardware issues also which has to be taken into account and as the technology is advanced and then will be coming on roads this uh, autonomous vehicles these bad actors will create and we have to take it into uh, what we are do a teenager has demonstrated that he has done uh, BLE he exploit uh, basically bluetooth uh, uh, low energy capabilities of it and he exploit it and he demonstrated flaws in the aspects right he unlock the car and even provide controlling to its uh, audio system so these are there and there are even somewhere encountered that, that uh, people are making the hackers are making uh, and they, the good actors they show that they have made the hot spots and they manipulated the gps uh, coordinates over there researchers in uk has also demonstrated that uh, uh, means it shows that we have take control of all the activities of the vehicle by just fake updating uh, of the uh, uh, updates which we, which were coming and that also from the uh, authenticate server right so these some of the things i just mentioned to you there are a lot of things are going on still we are in that uh, stage and as this type of activity like for example is going on when we are using mobile phones and web things the same cyber security people they are advancing and making their technology in a best possible way so this i look at and i think you covered it quite comprehensively so as we hand over i think some of our operations to machines obviously the, we need to have that fences around machines so that it can be securely and common people do not detect what is happening right so 99.99% cannot detect this uh, what if they if they positions that data according to their will so this is all i understand i think finally it, it, it's a machine and it has got a connectivity mm. so obviously there are vulnerabilities and as it is getting connected it is getting exposed to a wider attack surface visa is our traditional cars where i mean it was not connected even today some of the car manufacturers if you have to update the firmware we go into garage and update it right it's still not connected right so obviously i think if you have to have that convenience and comfort and efficiency we have to draw a line uh, but coming back to dr shishir uh, are there any standard guidelines for connected and autonomous vehicle uh, within our country uh, which uh, Uh, in your knowledge we are working on which could probably help the way drones uh, getting regulated uh yeah thank you prashant for this question and uh, i think uh, i should start uh, commenting on the question uh, before that uh, i think uh, in this uh, world the fascinating world of autonomous vehicle uh, why it is very important and why it is the need of an art is because almost 90% of the vehicle accident uh, they are actually uh, you know uh, the result of the human error and the adoption of this autonomous vehicle and uh, connected vehicles that will definitely safeguard more and more human life so that is why this is like though it is again it is immature till now but it is very important to uh, uh, to address this thing 
and to understand the utility of adopting the autonomous uh, vehicles. Uh, talking about the regulation, uh, even the, the situation of India and the world is almost somehow uh, same. Uh, recently in January, uh, January 2022 this year, Scottic Law uh, Commission, they published their recommendation for the safe and responsible driving. So they, they, they talked and they defined the definition of autonomous uh, driving specifically because what is happening, uh, people are getting confused with the adaptive cruise control and self-driving. So there, there is a clear differentiation. There is a clear difference between the adaptive cruise control where the system, where the uh, operating system of a car is taking some decision, but it is not self-driven. So uh, that need to be understood, first of all. So we do have this uh, in India also, we do have some uh, cars, recently launched cars. They are having adaptive cruise control, but that cannot be used as a self-driven car. So it should not be. So uh, uh, that particular regulation, they mentioned about the self-driving features and how the self-driving feature of any autonomous vehicle is different from AI-assisted or driving-assisted features. So why it is important? Because there is one uh, line which clearly differentiate these two uh, features is when the vehicle is on automated or autonomous mode or in a self-driving mode, then the, the person in the driving seat would no longer be the driver. He is the user in charge. So he is not a driver. He is the user in charge. And the responsibility when, you know, something happens, like, will be equally shared by the manufacturer and the, uh, the user in charge. So that mandate has to be understood uh, in terms of any fault occurs and what would be the liability uh, of the manufacturer in that. Talking about this, uh, I just explain it one uh, in, in one more minute. The Society of Automotive Engineers, they mentioned five categories of autonomous vehicles. So first one is the level one, which is assisted automation, what we have just discussed. Then level two is the partial automation. And then level three, four, five. So five is the extreme uh, condition where the vehicle is going to decide. Like it's a completely fully automated self-driven car or vehicle. While level four is, uh, you know, some decisions and level three would be the conditional automation. Based on certain uh, uh, condition, uh, the vehicle will take the decision. So the automotive industry globally is still learning with the facts, with the incidences. And uh, India is again uh, being as one of the largest uh, automotive uh, automobile industry of the world. Uh, it need to uh, get to lay down the regulation. The Indian Motor uh, Vehicle Act, uh, again the Privacy Act, again the IT Act. I will talk about uh, all these acts are crossroads, and we need to have a specific uh, autonomous driving or connected uh, for uh, connected vehicles. A specific. Uh, regulation yet to come we believe this will shape eventually talking about uh, the the things which uh, which will ensure the safe uh, autonomous ride will be the intelligent assessment with the specific clear definitions of what is what and what is going to happen if certain uh, you know if any any wrong thing happens who will bear the responsibility and liability? So that's the question of uh, of uh, uh, of an hour for uh, for this particular uh, scenario. The other very important thing is the cybersecurity incidences because uh, in case of a fully automated self-driven car, it will be there will be an operating system. There will be multiple software which is going to take care of of everything and it will take control. Now, obviously, uh, we cannot give control to to machine. Uh, you know, and and be relaxed, sit back and relax. Because if anybody, there are possibilities of there will be multiple vulnerabilities in hardware as well as in softwares. Uh, we have seen that uh, some of the automated uh, cars they are getting hacked even at the time when they were do, uh, doing the OTA updates, over the air updates. So while upgrading the system, people are trying to get hacked. So it is on a yeah, very. Yeah, thank you.
thank you dr shishir i think positive of the time we have only 2 minutes remaining now so i think there are few questions there on a chat uh, maybe uh, dr rizvi i just ping the one question maybe if you can uh, answer that rest of the question audience we will answer offline uh, and, and then uh, i think uh, through dsci you can reach out to them for those offline answers so dr rizvi if you can uh, quickly answer that uh, question Yeah. What is the question? Question is about uh, how crucial is the role of uh, mobile network provider to initialize commercial use of UAB? Yeah, uh, the role of mobile provider is very very important in the coming time. What I am seeing that these autonomous vehicle and even autonomous drone, right? What I am seeing, maybe uh, it will be mostly connected through mobile provider uh, in the in the coming era. when we will progress to 5g communication and that's it certainly yeah i think mobile provider is going to play a key role because it's going to be an underlying uh, connectivity uh, so they are going to be a, one of the major stakeholder uh, uh, beyond your other supply chain stakeholder including manufacturer or software service provider uh, or for that matter a controller right so multiple stakeholders but yeah i, I totally agree so i think we are on top of the hour uh, we only have 30 seconds so i'd like to thank all the, my panelists dr shishi dr rizvi uh, nagini ma'am th- thanks for your insight uh, i think it was quite a uh, in comprehensive holistic discussion uh, it's a wider subject we cannot cover it uh, entirely but uh, thank you all and appreciate uh, all attendees uh, for patiently listening our conversation Uh, appreciate DSCI as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to the Thank other you. moderator as well. Thank you, Prashant ji. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.